Hello and welcome back to our Lord of the Rings LCG solo progression series. And today's quest is the Steward's Sphere, which is the first adventure pack in the Against the Shadow cycle. And this is the continuation of the story introduced in the Heirs of Numenor Deluxe Expansion. A quick reminder, in the series we're playing through each quest in chronological order of the game's initial release. And we'll only be using player cards that were available at the time of this quest release. I'm calling this deck It's Not a Sphere uh, because despite the title of this actual quest, this, uh, I would say Steward is not a sphere. And I think Jared would agree with me. Uh, so this is definitely a fan favorite. We're going to be sleuthing in this quest as we try to discover what's happening in the underworld of Minas Tirith. Uh, and this is also a really great deck in terms of player cards. You have the Outlands characters, you have Gondorian Shield, uh, uh, Mithrander's Advice, and uh, a good harvest. Great, great deck, and a great quest. Let's get to the quest and see how we do. Okay, so before setup, let's look at our opening hand and decide if we like it. I think we do. I like seeing uh, Expecting Mischief. Uh, that's a good one to have. I think Ranger Spikes is good to have. I don't know, though. I think I might would rather have Ranger Spikes. Um, I mean, it's good to have Steward of Gondor, though. Let's just let's leave this as our opening hand. Okay, so here is Conspiracy. Even as foes mass from without, the Steward of Minas Tirith fears there are enemies within. You have been asked to investigate the possibility of a conspiracy within the White City. For setup, we create the Underworld deck. And so let me show you what that is. That's a separate deck. It's not set aside. It's in play, but it's just not the encounter deck. It's the Underworld deck. And it's comprised of all these brigands that we saw in Peril and Pelar gear. And also there are three um, objectives like this one, a scrap of history. Those are positive. If we get those, that's a good thing. It's a clue that will help us on our, on our quest to solve this mystery. So those are the Underworld cards. Now we remove Roots of Mendeluin from the encounter deck and set it aside out of play. Here is Roots of Mendeluin that will come into play later. And then lastly, uh, let me read all this and explain it. Shuffle all villain cards and randomly set one aside out of play without looking at it. Then remove the others from the game. Repeat this with all plot cards. So there are three villains and when we get to the end, one of these is going to be the mastermind. The uh, villain is what it's called. And you can see the type is villain. And so right now we're supposed to shuffle these three, deal one face down and discard the others. And then later on we'll turn over the card. Aha, we see who the villain is. But what we'll do when we get to that point, we'll just select the number one through three and then we'll, we'll see. And then there's another situation where you do, you do the same thing with these plot cards. Unholy Alliance, Up in Flames, or Poison Councils. One of these three will be the plot. One of these three will be the enemy. So a little bit of variability there. Okay, so side B, you begin your investigation at the fourth star, a popular tavern. When revealed, search the encounter deck for the fourth star and make it the active location. Here is the fourth star. It's the active location now and it has the keyword underworld and the value is X. X is the number of players in the game. Usually all these locations that have underworld say underworld one. When, when one enters play that has the word underworld, the word underworld, you take one of these face down, uh, the one off the top of the deck, you just you take one of these face down and you attach it underneath the uh, underworld location. But I can't do that without it flipping over. So I'm gonna shuffle this back into the deck. And so I've got a workaround. I'm gonna just move one. I did shuffle the deck when I put it back in. Okay, so I'm gonna move one to the top of the encounter deck and then shift E reveals it face down. And for whatever reason now, when I attach it, it does not turn back over. So kind of a roundabout way to do it, but it works. Whenever four star leaves play, this card, which could be an enemy, is revealed and added to the staging area. And that can be something we don't like. So we'll be ready for that. Now to make progress in this quest, you notice it has a dash instead of a value, a questing value. There's a force effect after the active location leaves play as an explored location, place one resource token on this quest. So we have to basically clear four active locations to advance. 
And if there are four or more resource tokens on conspiracy, advance to the next stage. All right, so resource phase. It's good to see a test of will. Let's exhaust bear board to draw two cards. And we will use Denethor's action, exhaust him to look at the top card of the encounter deck. And we may move it to the bottom, but I don't want to. I want to just take care of this guy. So uh, I'm actually not going to commit Glorfindel just to keep our threat from going up. Uh, we're just going to not commit anybody. We're going to go. Uh, there's an action window after uh, committing characters, which we didn't commit anybody. Let's play Expecting Mischief. When we do, we and this is the only window you can play it is this action window before staging. We would deal two damage to the first enemy revealed from the encounter deck this phase. It is Underworld Dissident. He's destroyed. We made no progress. And so we will refresh. Let's move that back to the encounter deck, I think. Yeah. So next round... Refresh and next round. Yeah, I hit shift E on accident. Okay. Now let's exhaust bear board to draw two cards. Perfect. We will uh, go ahead and play. Let's play Daron's Runes to draw two cards and discard a Steward of Gondor. All right. We're going to play a good harvest. Name a sphere. We're going to say leadership. Until the end of the phase, you can spend resources from any sphere when paying for cards that belong to the name sphere. So this is going to convert resources. I mean, if I wanted to, once I play this, I still can play lore resources as lore, but I can also choose to spend any resources as leadership. Now, this does not give us a resource icon, so you can't use this to pay for zero cost cards. If there was a leadership zero cost, I couldn't use a good harvest to pay for it. Because it converts resources, it does not give a hero the ability to play for cards that are out of sphere. So remember, a good harvest does not work on zero cost. Okay, but we will play it and say leadership and spend two resources, convert those to leadership. And now we have a Steward of Gondor. We attach it to Glorfindel. So much better than Song of Kings uh, and, and most of the time. Okay, let's use Denethor's action to look at the top card. False lead is just fine. Um, we don't even need to worry about playing the Light of Valinor right now. So we're not going to commit anybody to the quest. And we're just going to go straight to the staging. And it says, when revealed, end the quest phase without resolving the quest. So our threat doesn't go up. And uh, so we just go to the end of the quest phase. Nothing happens. We'll refresh and move on to the next round. Steward of Gondor. We'll draw two cards with Barivor. So what I really want to see at this point is Unexpected Courage. I don't have one yet, but let's see. Uh, lurking in the Shadows. That's going to surge. If I want to keep doing what I'm doing right now, I could just play a Test of Will. I think I'll do that just to keep things from happening. We don't have Asphaloth yet. We don't have Ranger Spikes. We don't have um, Unexpected Courage. And so we're just really not wanting to have a lot of cards added in the staging area. We don't have all the tools yet to really deal with stuff. But let's go ahead and attach Light of Valinor to Glorfindel. And so he can exhaust, he can quest without exhausting. That keeps our threat from increasing. <clears throat> And we will just quest with Glorfindel. And we reveal lurking in the shadows. This would surge because there's no brigand enemies engaged with us. They would want to move back to the staging area. But let's cancel that with Test of Will. The surge is baked into the wind revealed. So we did make three progress. Not ready yet to explore the four star. Refresh next round. There is an Unexpected Courage. That's a good card to have drawn. Bearboard draws us two cards. All right, we have both copies of Will of the West. That's really good. So now I'm really missing uh, a Ranger Spikes. Let's exhaust Steward of Gondor. Let's use Denethor's action. Uh, this isn't so bad. We'll let that come out. And 
and let's go ahead and attach Unexpected Courage to Denethor. And so we're not going to commit anybody to the quest. We're going to reveal local trouble. When revealed, attach this card to the hero with the highest threat cost that does not have a local trouble attached. That's going to be Barivor. She has 10 threat. And it counts as an attachment, a condition attachment, which uh, I'm not sure why I just did this. I thought I had a minor of the Iron Hills. I don't, but we'll get to one. Uh, whenever this hero, which is Barivor, she readies or exhausts or triggers an ability, uh, your threat goes up by one. So if we use her action every round, that's going to be a three threat increase from having local trouble each round. Okay, but we made no progress. We didn't want to. Let's use Denethor's action. Uh, Underworld Dissident, we'll be fine with that. We refresh whenever Barivor refreshes. We raise our threat by one due to local trouble. Next round. All right, so as much as it pains me, I, I need to draw cards, so I'm just going to let my threat go up by three this round. Let's draw two cards with Barivor. Okay, by two. So our threat goes up by two right now because she exhausted and she used an ability. So each instance of that. Now let's play, whoops. Let's play Miner of the Iron Hills. When he enters play, he discards this attach this condition attachment. So not too big a deal, just to have our threat bumped just a little bit. Still no ranger spikes. I'm so annoyed. Uh, and I don't have Anfloss Herdsman, so I don't want to put out Ithere the, the Swordsman because if this was Zealous Trader, we'd lose our Ithere Swordsman. So we just kind of stuck a little bit. Um... So yeah, we're not going to send anybody on the quest once again, but we will play Expecting Mischief right before staging, and we reveal Underworld Dissident. He's destroyed. We use Denethor's action. We don't... I think we've probably played all three Expecting Mischiefs. Just two of them, but we don't know if we'll have one, so let's move him to the bottom of the deck. Ready, Denethor, and do it again. Uh, we have Test of Will where we could deal with this. But I want to get some locations in play, so let's move that to the bottom. We'll refresh. Next round. We have not explored a single active location yet. It's so strange. Drawing two cards with Barivor. There we go. There's Asphaloth. There's... I forgot about Asphaloth. I knew we were missing some things. Okay, we have Ranger Spikes, so let's play Ranger Spikes. And let's exhaust Denethor. That's perfect. Okay, so things turned around really quickly here. Let's play Asphaloth. And we attach it to Glorfindel. We'll exhaust Asphaloth. When it's attached to Glorfindel, we put two progress tokens on any location. Let's put it on... Actually, not yet. Let's not exhaust Asphaloth yet. I'm scared to put out Ithir Swordsman until I have an Anfloss Herdsman. So we're going to... I think we... Yeah, let's just exhaust Asphaloth. Okay, so two progress placed on fourth star at leaves play. It's not... It doesn't go to the victory display, but we do draw a card when it leaves play. And now this card that was underneath it is going to be revealed and added to the staging area. It is Zealous Trader. And because we have a Ranger Spikes ready for him, he just is stuck. And he contributes no threat. Okay, we'll quest with Glorfindel. That was during the planning phase that we played Asphaloth. We'll quest with Glorfindel and reveal Lost in the City. When revealed, each player must search the encounter deck and discard pile for one city location and add it to the staging area if able. Shuffle the encounter deck. This effect cannot be canceled. And I really like seeing this shadow effect discarded. What I want is city streets. There aren't any in the, in the discard pile. If there were, I'd grab one because it's a good card. You want the locations that don't say Underworld. That's the best thing in this quest. If I ever did grab that out of the... Was this a city? Okay, I could do four star. That might be kind of weird. 
to do that again, but it's got Underworld. So, uh, but if I grabbed a City Street out of the discard pile, I would still have to shuffle the deck. And this matters for a Denethor deck because it says shuffle the encounter deck. You always shuffle the encounter deck when you search through the encounter deck or through your deck. You have to shuffle it, even if it neglects to say it. You wouldn't have to if it's if this did not say shuffle your deck or shuffle the encounter deck. You could search the discard pile and leave this alone. But uh, just wanted to mention that. So we're going to grab a city street because when we do this, it's not revealed. It's added. Shuffle the deck. So that changes things with the Denethor deck, right? But this is not revealed. It is added, and so it does not surge. And we made one progress. It doesn't matter because Conspiracy can't have progress. We did forget the force effect after the active location leaves play as an explored location. Place one resource token on this quest. So we're one of four away. Now we'll travel to City Street. Um, we're not quite ready to deal with Zealous Trader. If I had put out an, uh, a Burning Brand, I could have dealt with this guy. But it's fine. Okay, refresh. Next round. Steward of Gondor drawing two cards with Barivor. Okay, we have an Amphilos Herdsman, so that is good. Uh, let's use Denethor's action. Okay, Market Square. Uh, but let's go ahead and just use Asphaloth to clear City Street out. And so we have another resource token on Conspiracy. All right, I'm going to not play any allies yet. I am going to play one, two, let's play. Let's play a Burning Brand. And we will go ahead and quest just with Glorfindel. And we reveal Market Square. And so we didn't make any progress. During the travel phase, we'll travel here to Market Square. We cannot as full off this because it's immune to player card effects. But to travel here, each player must spend one resource from one of his hero's resource pools to travel here. So let's go there. Now we're going to optionally engage Zealous Trader. Force, when Zealous Trader engages a player, that player must deal one damage to each ally he controls. We control one. And two, if he was not optionally engaged. Okay, so he's going to attack. We're going to ready Denethor and defend. Two, a three attack against three defense. And the shadow says if this attack is undefended, remove one token from the current quest. We could, we could have canceled anything with a burning brand. And now we can attack for three and four and destroy Zealous Trader. Okay, refresh. Next round. Steward of Gondor, Barevor draws two cards. And we definitely want to grab this uh, Ranger Spikes. So one, two. Let's play an Airbore Hammersmith. And whenever he enters play, after you play Airbore Hammersmith, return the topmost attachment in any player's discard pile to his hand. I was just thinking the other day, I think on my first recording ever, I said, I've never played multiplayer. So I said something I think just stupid. After you play Airborne Hammersmith, return the topmost attachment in any player's discard pile to that player's hand. So you can't use this to play cards from other people's discard piles. Pretty sure. I think I think I said that in the first recording. Maybe it was another card, but um, anyway, I think that in my mind I thought that. But I've only ever played solo, so I've never done that uh, wrong. I just maybe made that statement incorrectly. Okay, let's use Denethor's action. Okay, we want to move any kind of surge down. Denethor readies and does his action again. Storehouse is fine. Uh, let's play a Ranger Spikes. And let's go ahead and play both of these at their swordsmen. Okay, so they are Outlands characters. Each Outlands character you control gets plus one. There's two of them, so each Outlands character is going to get plus two. So right now they're questing for three each, but they're really weak. Remember that Zealous Trader, how he damaged... Uh, 
So by the way, I didn't mention this, but when you discard Underworld cards, they go into your discard pile. All right, so if Zealous Trader were to engage us, we'd lose the Ethereum Swordsman. So we're going to play a single and Floss Herdsman. And the second we do, they're boosted for two. Now there's a, 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 each Outland's character you control gets plus one hit point. So they're not as squishy. They can deal just fine with that Zealous Trader guy. And if I wanted to, I could play another. Let's do it. Let's play both and Floss Herdsman's. So plus two defense or health, I mean, and, and willpower. All right. We want to quest and reveal storehouse underworld one. So we're going to take an underworld card, put it on top of the encounter deck, reveal it face down and attach it as my workaround. Okay. So we made 11 progress. We, we had to, we couldn't use Asphaloth. So Marcus where leaves play. And a third location has, active location has been explored. So we're one away from advancing. Now we'll travel to Storehouse. And I can get rid of Storehouse right now with Asphaloth. But I always want to make sure I've done a few things before I advance past stage one. I need a Test of Will or a Will of the West. I have two. And I want Protector of Lorien. There's two. It would be good to have both, but this is fine. So I feel pretty good about everything. So let's go ahead and exhaust during the, uh, we'll just do this during the, uh, well, during the travel phase because we just traveled here. Let's exhaust Asphaloth to put two progress on Storehouse. It leaves play. And so this card is revealed and added to the staging area. It's Los Arnott Bandit. And he has a Ranger Spikes waiting for him. A progress is placed on Conspiracy. If there are four or more resource tokens on Conspiracy, advance to the next stage. Okay, the grand design. You have uncovered crucial information about the, dis the dissident plot and even gleaned hints of the conspirator's secret leader. Clues have led you to a cavern deep in the heart of Mount Mindaluin. As you descend into the ancient rock, you begin to suspect the clues that, le that led you here may have been misleading, that you may have been lured away from the city streets for a purpose. When revealed... Reveal the set-aside plot card and add it to the staging area. So there's three plots, and one of them we'll just choose at random here. Let me talk about each one just and mention how the deck is built to deal with them. Unholy Alliance is negative in that you have to reveal two cards per round. So it's really good to have Test of Wills if you can have them. We were good because that's really the worst. I mean, if it's going to surge... Uh, at this point, it would only surge. The only enemy is the dissident guy, so we're fine. But uh, locations could build up. But by this point, really, we can usually overcome anything. I don't like this because of the, in, the uncertainty of what's coming after the first card. Uh, that would be my least favorite. My second least favorite would be Up in Flames. Force at the end of the round, place one resource token on Up in Flames. So it starts off with none. But then you discard the top X cards of each player's deck. So if there's one resource on Up in Flames, X is the number of resources. You would discard one card. Next round, at the end of the round, you discard two, then three, then four. If, the, if there's ever a player who has no cards in his deck, the players have lost the game. So the way we combat this, we have 17 cards, so we're really not worried but sometimes I've moved on with having almost no cards. And so what I can do is discard a bunch of cards with Protector of Lorien and then bring them back with Will of the West and then we're fine. So you want to have Will of the West because if you happen to draw this as the plot and you didn't have Will of the West and let's just say, oh my gosh, I keep discarding Will of the West. There's only two. You're done. So you have to be careful with that. This is the most player friendly because we have when this comes out between two wills of the will of the West and Elrond's council, our threat will be really low. It says at the end of each round, raise each player's threat by two. So we're going to choose one of these at random number one through three, and it's going to be, uh, the unholy Alliance, my, my, my least favorite. So that's fine. Okay. Uh, whoops. I don't know what I just did. Oh, I sent it to the victory display. The grand design when revealed, Make Roots of Mindaluin the active location, returning any other active location to the staging area. Here is Roots of Mindaluin. It has Underworld 1. 
So let's do an underworld card. And so that's going to be, you know, attached underneath. It tells us each location in the staging area gets plus two quest points. All right. And same thing as last time. You can't make progress, but when the active location leaves play, put a resource on it. Four means we advance. Okay, so that's travel is what we, when we did all that. We're not going to optionally engage low or not bandit. I uh, just don't like that guy at all. So we will refresh because uh, <coughs> Denethor has already used his actions. So refresh. And at the and next round. Okay, Steward of Gondor. So now we don't have to worry about disc. We can just draw cards. We don't have to worry about Will of the West and all that. Okay, let's play our third and Philosopher'sman. And let me just look at my discard pile. We really haven't seen. We just keep recycling this one Ranger Spikes. I wish we could draw Ranger Spikes. Um, I, I don't think I need to be necessarily so scared since all of our... Well, okay, so all of these Outlands characters are boosted for three plus three health. So they're all four health. Uh, if we lose Minor of the Iron Hills, that's not a big deal. I have Burning Brand. I'd love to get another Unexpected Courage. I don't have it yet. Let's play uh, Protector of Lorien in case we need to, you know, defend against uh, Umbar Assassin or something like that. Um, let's use Denethor's action once during planning just to see what's coming. Okay, it's something that's going to surge. And remember, we're about to reveal two cards. So we're ready in him. And uh, let's go ahead and play a good harvest and say leadership. No, no, not leadership. We're not going to play a good harvest. All right, we're going to... Uh, So I've got a single copy of Gandalf, and he's for dealing with the uh, final boss. But I'm tempted to kind of play him from my hand because I don't know what's coming out. I'm still a little bit, like I'd like to have more Unexpected Courages and a second Burning Brand. I can't really, I could put a second Burning Brand on Denethor, but he doesn't have enough Unexpected Courages. So I could draw a bunch of cards. Let's do that. And I can bring back Gandalf with Will of the West. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's play Gandalf and draw three cards. That might get us further along with this card draw. Okay, we uh, will play Daron's Runes, drawing two cards and discarding a Light of Valinor. There we go. There is a Unexpected Courage. Let's attach that to Denethor. And... We'll play a good harvest and say lore, and we can play a burning brand now. All right, that was all fun. So we have two burning brands, and we have protector of Lorien on him, so we are set. So two cards will be revealed ultimately, and if it's an enemy, two enemies, we're we're not worried because Denethor could defend against both. Okay, we don't need to make a whole lot of progress. Let's just see. Uh, since these guys can't really attack, I think that's enough. Maybe we send one Ethereum Swordsman. Okay, we reveal Lurking in the Shadows. I'm not going to worry about canceling it. Remember, we're revealing two cards because of Unholy Alliance. So that's going to surge into City Street, which is going to surge. Uh, Houses of the Dead. So, you know... This one I normally would bury with Denethor, but here we go. We do have an Underworld 2. Uh, so let's... Um, we're going to put these two Underworld cards on top. And put them underneath Houses of the Dead. And so now the final encounter card, I say final, is Knife in the Dark. And I don't want to do this. Gandalf might be the, the uh, discarded... 
basically randomly select one ally. First player deals X damage to one of his heroes. X is that ally's attack. Then discard that ally. Uh, so Glorfindel could take the four attack, but uh, I'm just going to cancel it with Test of Will. And we made five progress and cleared roots of uh, Mandaluan. And so that leaves play, which means a progress or a resources place on Grand Design. What is revealed here? Okay, not an enemy, but secret map, which uh, we're not really worried about. This one just puts progress tokens on the active location. We don't need that. Okay, so we have to travel to City Street because it says while City Street is in the staging area, players cannot travel to a location that does not have the title City Street. I don't really plan, I think, at all on ever traveling to Houses of the Dead. I don't want it to uh, become the active location and exhaust characters and two underworld. I just don't like that too much. Let's exhaust Asphaloth to put two progress on City Street. And so a second resource is placed on the grand design. And... Uh, we couldn't have traveled to Houses of the Dead anyway, but uh, so Gandalf was kind of not needed ultimately. Let's, uh, oops, let's use Denethor's action. City Street, we need locations, so I think I'm fine with that. We need uh, two more locations to move on. So we'll leave that there. Uh, that, what does this guy do? When Los Arnott Bandit engages a player, that player discards one resource from each of his hero's resource pools to... So one resource, I'll just lose one resource. Yeah, we'll just deal with him. We'll engage him. We lose one resource from Glorfindel. We ready Denethor. Shadow is dealt. Oh, okay, it's this. We'll defend with Denethor. Three against three. We'll cancel the shadow with Burning Brand. And we can attack for seven and destroy... Los are not bandit. And now we can use Airborne Record Keeper to, or not Record Keeper, Airborne Hammersmith to get this Ranger Spikes back. Okay, we will refresh. And Gandalf leaves play at the end of the round. Next round. Drawing two cards with Barivor. And uh, playing. Unexpected Courage. We have all three copies. Let's just see what's coming. It is sewers. We need locations, so we're fine with this, I guess. Uh, we need to play an Airborne Record or Hammersmith and grab the topmost attachment from our discard pile. It's just crazy that we've only ever had one Ranger Spikes, and, and that's why we have Erebor Hammersmith. Uh, we're not going to explore anything this round, so I don't have to worry about um, Ranger Spikes yet. Well, we might have an enemy come out, but we'd be fine. We're not going to... Mostly, I want to use Ranger Spikes for Underworld cards, so... We should be fine here. We have Test of Will. I, I don't want a Dissident to be hung up on a Ranger Spike, so I'm not. If if a Underworld Dissident comes out, I don't mind just defending against it and destroying it. Okay, so we're gonna quest. I want to leave these uh, Ithir Swordsmen ready. They've got some attack uh, abilities. Okay, so we've got to reveal two cards. So the first one is Sewers Underworld 1. So this is the Underworld card underneath it. When revealed, place the top card of the Underworld deck face down underneath the active location. So that's the one that I mentioned that might could increase the Underworld count under a card, but... Uh, so there's no active location though. And so now the second card revealed is Underworld Dissident. All right, let's go ahead and play. Let's do it. Let's play three copies or one copy, I guess, of 
Elrond's council. And that just keeps our threat from going up. Okay, so we've completed questing. We revealed the two cards. During travel, we don't want Houses of the Dead to be a location we t that we meddle with. So let's travel to uh, sewers. We'll exhaust Asphaloth to put two progress on sewers. Underworld Dissident will engage us and get a shadow card. We'll defend with Denethor. And in fact, before we defend with Denethor, I need to... Sometimes I kind of be... I don't make things clear. So during the action window before the attacks, let's use Denethor to look at what's coming. Uh, I don't mind this. I can get rid of it with the uh, Miner of the Iron Hills. Although I'd rather not. Let's move that to the bottom of the deck. We'll ready Denethor. We'll move that maybe to the bottom of the deck. Because we need a fourth location here. Okay, we're going to ready Denethor and he's going to defend now against Underworld Dissident. Underworld Dissident gets plus one attack for each Underworld location in play. There are two. So this is going to be four attack against Denethor's three, defense of three. And there's no shadow effect. Uh, I can use Protector of Lorien, let's discard Light of Valinor to keep him from d being damaged. And now we attack for three, four, five, whatever. We, we destroyed Underworld Dissident. <clears throat> okay, refresh. Next round. You can see why I don't like Unholy Alliance. It's definitely the hardest one. Okay, now we have Ranger Spikes. Two of them, drawn two cards with Barivore. And we'll play Daron's Runes to draw two cards, and we'll discard um, an Asphaloth. All right, so we have all three Ranger Spikes now. There they were. Okay, let's use Denethor. All right, we'll uh, leave him. I say that uh, I don't. You don't want to play Ranger Spikes and um, let's see. Unexpected Courage says or expected mischief. Deal two damage to the first enemy revealed from the encounter deck this phase. So I can. Just destroy him outright. I'm not really worried about enemies particularly. So yeah, we'll just uh, let's do this. Let's play. Uh, we'll use a good harvest to to say lore. And so this phase we can play a ranger spikes and let's exhaust. Asphaloth to put two progress on sewers. It leaves play, meaning a progress is placed on or a resource is placed on Grand Design, and Pickpocket is ensnared by the uh, Ranger Spikes. So we're one location away. Let's ready Denethor. And we'll attack. Uh, we're in the planning phase. Let's just use a resource from Glorfindel to attach a Protector of Lorien to Glorfindel. Okay, we're questing. And uh, we will play... We're in the quest phase, so we can't use Glorfindel anymore since, you know, this is for the phase. We're going to play an Expecting Mischief. And we have to reveal two cards. And the expected mischief destroys this dissident. And then here we go. Good. There's our final location we need to advance. We made seven progress, but it didn't matter. During travel, we travel here to Market Square. And uh, I'm not really worried about Ranger Spikes anymore. I'll just leave Pickpocket alone. Let's use Denethor's action. A knife in the back. 
Let's move that to the bottom. Sewers. I don't really need locations anymore. And then a Thor again. Storehouse is fine, I guess. It's better than sewers. It's worth two threat. Okay, we will... We can't use Asphaloth because he's exhausted, but even if we could, this is immune to player card effects. So refresh. And next round, I know what it is. It's Ethere Swordsman. Okay, Steward of Gondor. Let's play Ethere Swordsman. So now we have fully boosted Outland's characters in terms of health and defense, or health and willpower. Okay, I want to go ahead and play two Elrond's Councils and lower my threat by six. And I want to play a Will of the West and move this to the victory to start to set aside. And so this recycles my discard pile back into my encounter deck. And I exhaust Bearboard to draw two cards. And I use... Uh, so if I put out a Ranger Spikes... Um, I don't really think I need to. If I put out a Ranger Spikes, if an Underworld Dissident came out, it would be ensnared. That's good. But um, the enemy that comes out could be this gal, uh, Daughter of Baruthiel, and she cannot be officially engaged, and so she'd come into play. Ranger Spikes would grab her and keep her in staging, and we couldn't optionally engage her. And so we'd need to play Gandalf, which he's in our deck, We'd have to use his response. He's discarded. We'd have to will the West him back in. So it's not the end of the world. Um, Trying to think if either one, do I want to play a Ranger Spikes knowing that it's just going to result in these guys being the snared. I don't think I do. I want to deal with my rangers or with my, uh, with these, uh, different various, um, criminal elements. I want them to engage me. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I'm feeling the pressure of trying to think quicker, but just have a thought. I'm trying to process, um, So she wouldn't attack us, so he would he wouldn't attack us. So yeah, I guess it's worth playing a Ranger Spikes. We can at least see what happens. Okay, we will we we can't get rid of Market Square with Asphaloth because it's immune to player card effects. But all we need to do is just clear Market Square. It will be fine, I think. We reveal Storehouse. And so this Underworld card is going to be attached face down to it. Because of Unholy Alliance, another card is revealed. And it is False Lead. When revealed in the quest phase without resolving the quest. Uh, I don't want to mess around with that. I'm just going to play Test of Will and cancel that. And so we cleared Market Square and we completed Grand Design. So let's advance. To the confrontation, you have unmasked the conspiracy and its champion is upon you. The wheels of treachery are in motion and only a heroic effort can stop the Cabal's plan in time. When revealed, reveal the set-aside villain card and add it to the staging area. So that villain is going to be one of these three. We're going to go random three. Okay, it is the hand of Castamere. And so he is engaged or he's ensnared by Ranger Spikes. He's not immune to player card effects. So he says, after force, after the hand of Castamere attacks, reveal the top card of the encountered deck. 
resolve its effects and discard it. There's a force effect after a treachery card is revealed from the encounter deck. The hand of Castamere makes an immediate attack against the first player. So uh, the reason I put out Ranger Spikes is I was excited about the idea that maybe Daughter of Baruthiel would not engage us. We could just Gandalf her twice and be done. Okay, so the confrontation when revealed shuffle the in the underworld deck into the encounter deck. So all these underworld cards are now moved to the encounter deck. So a lot more enemies now, suddenly. The players cannot defeat the stage while a villain is in play. If the stage is defeated, the players have won the game. Okay, so we probably want to uh, travel to Storehouse, I think. Well, I don't think we need to because we have to make 15 progress. Threat is the same as progress, really. And uh, we could just clear this with uh, Asphaloth if we wanted to. Eh, we'll travel here. Okay, during the encounter phase, I can optionally engage Hand of Castamir. It, but it says, after the Hand of Castamir attacks, reveal the top card of the encounter deck, resolve its effects, and discard it. Uh, which maybe isn't so great, but forced after a treachery card is revealed from the encounter deck, the hand of Castamere makes an immediate attack against the first player. So if he's going to attack me, I mean, I, how much can I attack back for? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not quite enough. Well, with Denethor, I can actually destroy him. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah even without Denethor. So yeah, let's just engage this guy. We'll actually engage him. And he gets a shadow card. And uh, we're going to defend with Denethor. He's attacking for four. And no shadow effect. And just to keep Denethor from being damaged, let's discard this Asphaloth. It says, after the Hand of Castamere attacks, reveal the top card of the encounter deck and reveal, resolve its effects and discard it. So that is going to be a, a Stewards. When revealed, place the top card of the Underworld deck face down underneath the active location. There is no more Underworld deck, and so nothing happens there. But that's not added to stage, and it's discarded. So he attacked for four. Denethor defended. And now... Before attacking, let's use Denethor just to look. Zealous Traitor, we can put out Ranger Spikes and deal with him. Or use Expecting Mischief. Okay, so we'll attack for three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, I, yeah, and, and nine. So we destroyed the hand of Castamere. And it says uh, the players cannot defeat the stage while a villain is in play. No longer is there a villain in play. Okay, so we're going to refresh and move on to the next round. I think this is the final round. I think we can make that work. Let's actually exhaust Barevoir to draw two cards. And we'll play Daron's Runes, drawing two cards and discarding Light of Valinor. Playing Daron's Runes, drawing two cards, and discarding the Steward of Gondor. And let's go ahead and use Asphaloth. Let's do this. One, two, let's play Ranger Spikes. And we will Asphaloth Storehouse. And so this leaves play, and this card is a Prisoner which uh, puts resource tokens on the current quest. So if you ever get these, you want to use them in stage two. Uh, so nothing ensnared by Ranger Spikes. Since uh, I was ready in case something was ensnared, I was ready to play Expecting Mischief to deal with Zealous Trader, but we can just let Ranger Spikes deal with them. All right, we will 
don't have Gandalf, he's in the deck, but let's just quest. I think we'll make plenty of progress, actually, with all these Outlands characters. I think we're fine. We can always use uh, Protector of Lorien, so we should be. Okay, we reveal two cards. Zealous Trader. Minus two. And then this is a Unwelcome Discovery, which surges when revealed. Reveal one card from the Underworld deck and add it to the staging area. If it is a clue card, discard it instead. There's no Underworld deck, so it's just going to surge into another one of those. And then finally, a Scrap of History. We'll play Council of Elrond or Elrond's Council. And we can discard three cards with Protector of Lorien. So one, two, three, whatever. So we made 30 progress. And that's uh, 25. And so we won the game. Players cannot defeat the stage while a villain is in play. There's not one, and we've defeated the stage, so that was it. So I kind of don't like Unholy Alliance. It just gets a little messy. It's annoying, but uh, but if you by the time you advance, you're really ready for that. Um, you just have to be careful not to go to stage one until you have at least one Will of the West and maybe a Protector of Lorien just to mitigate against the other... Uh, plots that can ruin your day. It's more the plots and the enemies that are, that are the issue. But I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough and that you'll join me next time uh, as we continue along the um, Against the Shadow cycle. My favorite cycle, I think, uh, is the Against the Shadow. So looking forward to continuing that. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Bye.